Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This week we're going to be going over underglaze decals. So if you guys are unfamiliar with what underglaze is, it is essentially a high fire paint and it can go on to greenware, it can go on to bisqueware, and like what we're going to go over in this video, it can go on to um, transfer paper so that way people can sell you designs and things like that and you can have a perfect image transferred onto your pottery. So I have a couple of underglaze transfers that I have here. There are little tarot cards. This is going to be the side that we actually put down. You can see it's a little bit darker. I do also have some in some blue ink. This is kind of a mandala design here. And they also print them in white, a little harder to see, but it can be fun. So there's a lot of different things you can use with these. They also go under a couple of different names. So they can be underglazed decals, underglazed transfers, rice paper transfers, things like that. I got all of the ones that I'm gonna show you today at uh, Elan Transfers, um, but I know that Sand Bao makes a lot of really good ones, Milestone Decal. If you just go onto like Etsy or something, basically you can just look up underglazed transfers and it should just pop up immediately. But if you are a have any sort of background in silk screen or like any sort of like printmaking, they basically made a silk screen and then ran underglaze through it onto a piece of rice paper. And essentially that's what this is. So if you have any sort of printmaking background, you can make these all on your own if you'd like. But they are really cheap to get from a lot of small businesses and you know, small businesses love sport. So anyways, we'll get to it. So I have a bunch of these signs that I have been making with the tarot cards on there. I have this one with the star, but I have a couple of them that don't have anything on them. So I'm gonna show you guys just how to apply it really quick, easy. It's gonna be kind of the simplest video possible just to give you guys the gist of what to do and let you go from there. Cause again, like I say in all my videos, there's not a single way to do this. There is a million. And if you are a person who loves collages, this can be a really fun tool for you. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, everyone. So I have my plain ready to go Stein. It is in the leather hard stage. I would not suggest working on this any wetter than it is right now, but from here to like, you know, almost bone dry, it really doesn't matter. You do wanna be cautious of when you do this on bone dry clay, because you are adding moisture to it, could always cause it to crack in the process of giving it more hydration from there. So we're gonna find our little transfer. We're gonna find the darker side and we're gonna put this down. So when you look through it, you should see it right side up. So we see the magician, it's looking right. We'll go ahead and line this up. Now, cutting up your underglaze decal like this does make it easier for you to kind of see the parameters of how much space you're going to need on your pot for this or whatever you are working on. Now, I do have this trash bag underneath it. It does kind of help to keep the surface level just for me to be able to work on it a little bit better. So now that I have this on there, you're gonna need some water and a sponge. Do make sure that you have a clean sponge. Something like this will not work. It'll just get gross. Um, so nice soft sponge, fairly clean. And we're just gonna go ahead and hold this in place and we'll get some water, but not too much. Make sure your sponge is quite damp, but not soaking. So I always like to start in the center and just kind of start to wipe outward. You wanna make sure you really get all this, but you're not soaking this and making the glaze or the underglaze underneath it run. All right, so now that we have this flush to our pot, I like to kind of go in with my finger and make sure that everything is flat. You can also go in with a rib. I like a metal rib, but some people really like the plastic ones. I just like to go ahead and make sure that almost like, basically like if you were applying like a sticker, almost like all your air bubbles are out. But you don't wanna do this too much to the point where, you know, you start to get some streaks. It's important that when you first start doing this that you're not super like stuck on having this show up perfectly because some of this does end up kind of getting dropped out in the lining, which is kind of the downfall of underglaze transfers in comparison to drawing things by hand is sometimes the transfer doesn't always make it. So now that we have this, I'm gonna go ahead and find a corner. Just gonna slowly start to peel. And you only just kinda wanna go slow and at an angle for this. 
you know, just like ripping this off. Remember, it's kind of like a temporary tattoo. You always just kind of see if you got it first before you completely rip the whole thing off. So you can kind of see that some of my design here fell out. So what we can do is we can kind of push this back over because remember like half of this is still attached and I might just take my finger, get it a little wet, go over that just a little more. Doesn't always work, but it does help. Let's see if that comes on there a little bit better this time. Oh yeah, that helped, cool. And same thing with this side. This corner didn't quite get it all the way, but that's all right. Again, I'm not too particular that this, you know, comes out perfectly. But you know, if we can't help it, it, it is nice to do. All right, so there we have our magician. All right, everyone, so there we have our stein. I do want to mention that underglaze transfers can be used on greenware and on bisqueware, and there are pros and cons to doing each. So on the greenware, I find that, you know, because I'm doing like specific shapes, you can kind of see how this one sticks out on the rectangle that I had placed these on. What I ended up doing was going over my tarot cards originally and making kind of like a, almost like a template to carve out the rectangles and put them onto my pots. Now, had I done this after, or done my transfer after this had been fired, these would have shrunk and they may not have fit anymore. So you do wanna think about like, is the placement of your transfer going to end up matching the same spot once it's fired? Or is it better to do it in advance? I do think that across the board, it is a little bit better to do it on greenware, just because afterwards too, through the first firing, this is gonna solidify. So <clears throat> what I mean by that is basically, if you wipe it, anything like that, it's not gonna come off after the first firing, which means if you put on glazes and then you decide like, I don't like this glaze, or maybe like I just didn't want it this spot or something goes wrong, you can essentially wipe off the glaze and your transfer is still gonna be there. Now, if you do this after it's fired, essentially this, this is still, you know, able to be removed. So if you do this and then you put on a clear coat and you see that either the clear coat smudged this or, you know, just you didn't choose the right glaze color or whatever happened, if you go to wipe your glaze, you're gonna wipe this off too. So I do think that doing this in the beginning stage is much better. It can also be really cool for like layering. So if you decide that like you wanna put kind of a translucent glaze over this so that way you can kind of get like the black with a lighter color or anything like that, it's awesome for, having that sort of contrast and that depth in there. Additionally, I do want to mention these are, again, like we said, underglazes. So if I were to say, paint my entire cup like pink and then go over this with my black, you know, underglaze, it's still gonna come out pink and black, which is really cool to, again, get the layering in there. So, you know, if I have a white clay body and I put the blue on there, you know, that's also going to be really nice. And if you wanted to go in and even paint on top of it with other underglazes or to, you know, do that with glaze later, like that's also a really cool option. You can also layer these. So if I wanted to like cut out like the specific parts of this mandala and say, you know, put a tarot card like right in the middle of it or something like that, you know, this is going to transfer like flat down. So if this blue isn't going to go through the transfer. On, like underneath it, if that makes sense. So if I were to like layer the whole thing, you'd get tarot with a cool mandala effect around it. So for my collage artists out there, this is a great tool to use. And so they do also on a lot of these websites have an option for you to end up having either your designs printed on their paper. Usually it's a bit more expensive, but you know, if you are really like, you wanna try this out, but you don't wanna buy the printer yet, or you know, you wanna do this, but you don't want to do the silk screen, whatever your limitations are, and you just wanna see about getting your own design on these, I would definitely check out a lot of these websites. Elan Transfers is definitely my favorite, but Sanbao is a bit cheaper, but again, they come from all over the place and those are really just the big companies. There you guys have it. That is kind of the basics of how to do transfers. 
And one more thing, always make sure that you pull your paper off afterwards. Some people just like to leave it on there. That doesn't always work. Like the rice paper will like fire off. So I guess it's really fine if you put it in for the first firing. If you do like your transfer onto greenware and then it goes to the first firing, the, the paper will burn off in the first firing, but you don't know how well that image transferred until the paper comes off anyway. So you might as well just pull it off yourself. I have had people, you know, do underglaze transfers and then glaze directly on top of it. That's just gonna leave a whole spot of unglazed clay and some funky, you know, outer edges unless you precisely cut all of your decals like to the line exactly. So there you guys have it. I hope that that was helpful for you and um, I'd love to see what you guys end up making if you do end up using transfers. Do stay tuned though. I will go over overglazed transfers on another video soon. But for now, here is a, another tip and trick to help you through it. If you liked this video, go ahead and hit like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Um, uh, read all of them. So have a good week, guys.